What's up everybody, welcome to another video. My name is Tom and today I want to talk about editing or to be a little bit more specific about my personal editing workflow, how it is a little bit different compared to the workflow of the vast majority of filmmakers out there and why I think my approach to editing could probably help a lot of you out there to get your edits done quick and easy. But first, let's roll the intro. So of course everybody has his own workflow when it comes to editing. And there are already a lot of filmmakers talking in YouTube videos about their editing workflow. One of the most popular probably is the one by Peter McKinnon where he talks about what is called three-point editing. And it can be highly effective to some of you. If you don't already know the video, I've linked it down in the description. Go check it out. Also, if you didn't already know Peter McKinnon, check out his channel. He's a really awesome guy, an inspiring filmmaker. He does great tutorials on photography and videography and it's just amazing to watch him he's such a funny guy when I watched this video I realized that my workflow is a little bit different than Peter's and I tried out his method the three-point editing but I realized it didn't work for me and there's a simple reason for that which I want to talk about today and I also want to share with you how I start new projects the key aspects I always try to keep in mind to have everything as simple as possible and for that let's get straight in the computer so the first step in your editing process should always be organizing all your project files. And for me this means that I create a new project folder for every project and usually I also put in the date into the photo title so that I have everything organized by date which is just really handy for me in my workflow. Then I create a subfolder in there where I throw in all the footage that I got for this project. At this point I haven't made a selection yet and then I back up everything so that I always have a fresh backup of all my footage and nothing gets lost or damaged or anything. So for this project I already did that and then I make my first selection which means that I go through every clip and I decide whether I want to use it for the project or I can throw it out. And if I decide to throw it out, I really throw it out which means I erase it from my hard drive but not from the backup folder so that the footage folder I'm working with is really clean and I only have the stuff that I need in there. So and here comes the point where we first open up Adobe Premiere Pro and I already created a project folder for this little tutorial here. So we're gonna open this up and as you can see there's nothing in there yet, just my normal editing layout. And I created this layout so that I have everything I need in my editing process right away without having to switch between panels or something like that. So I have my media browser here, I have my preview monitor here, I have all the effects and control panels I need, I have a really big timeline so that I can zoom in and out as I want, I have my audio levels which I find really handy to have in my editing process, and I have these little shortcut icons here for the editing actions. So at this point we just want to throw in all the footage of the project and we don't want to do this by tracking the actual media files into it, we want to track the whole folder. So that in our media browser we have everything organized and a little bit clean. So and as you can see here we have our selection with all the media files in there and now we just want to create a new sequence and Premiere Pro makes this pretty easy to us. We don't have to set anything manually, we just can create a sequence with all the actual settings of our footage. And we want to do this by either tracking some of the clips on this little icon or we can even grab the whole folder again and track it over here. And here's why my editing workflow is a little bit different because I don't tend to use this three-point editing that most of the editors out there totally rely on because I found that a little bit too time consuming for me. Since I wasted a lot of time just overthinking my in and out points and stuff like that and the workflow I use is much more easier and much more practical orientated. So what I now want to do is I grab this whole photo with all my footage in there and create a new sequence. And here's the point where it's really important to know your keyboard shortcuts because make sure that you are familiar with all the different editing controls you have in Premiere and how you can use keyboard shortcuts to access them even faster and 
really speed up your editing process. Like I have my razor tool really down below so that I have quick access to it and Right next to it, I have my selection tool because for a raw edit, these are the tools I usually use the most. And I usually just switch between cutting and selecting. And what's also really important is the ribble delete because with that, you can just delete the part that you want to cut out and close the gap that this creates. I also have zoom in and zoom out down here, which is also really important. I have my render entire work area. I have delete over here. It's also really important. My rate stretch, my type tool, and of course the play and stop toggle. And these are the tools that are the most important to me. And I'm now going to show you how I use these tools Premiere Pro offers to work in a really quick and efficient way for creating first raw edit for a video. So we're just gonna go with this playback marker over here and we want to go to the first point where we may want to use some of the footage. Gonna click C, cut this, gonna click V again for the selection and then ribble delete. And boom, it's already deleted, the gap is closed. Doing the same over here because don't need too much of this drone footage. Okay, next clip. Let's move it forward. What do we have here? Yeah, maybe we can use this from here. Cut, select, ribble delete. Boom, cut. Okay, we're gonna check what's coming after that. Okay, there's some aerial footage. Just wanna, totally forgot to ribble delete. Okay, this looks nice. Select, ribbon delete. Okay, we have this. Cut, ribbon delete. I'll take the point where the drone stops, okay. Ribble delete. We have here. Okay, this looks really good. Ribble delete. Bam. Bam, bam, bam. Okay. Ribble delete. Bam. Cut, select, rip, delete, bam. So, and now we already have the drone footage, already edited like 10 minutes down to just 15 seconds. And this is how this whole editing process works. The first thing which is really important to every project is getting your original footage down to a first raw cut. Where like, if you have one or two hours of footage, you wanna edit it down to like five or 10 minutes of footage you then gonna use in your final edit. And only then if you have this first raw cut done, you wanna put some music in there so that you can like cut to the beat and you wanna really create a mood for the video. But for this first raw cut, music and color correction is only a distraction in just getting this edit done because this is the most important thing. Don't waste any time, don't overthink this process too much. And this is why at first I put all my clips in there and I just go through them clip by clip. And I don't want to go back and forth or put any color grading on it or want to get distracted by anything. I just want to get this first edit done. And this is going to make your whole editing and video creation process so much faster because you don't get distracted anymore by all that stuff that comes into your mind. So really keep this in mind. Try to keep your editing process as simple as possible. So this is it guys. This is how I edit my videos. It's really simple and it's not as technical and maybe not as professional as three-point editing, but it really works for me the best. I tried out different techniques and all of them didn't really work for me. This is how I get my stuff done quick and easy without having to overthink stuff, without getting distracted too much. 
So if you suffer from the same problems as I did sometimes when I just didn't know how to start and I was just overwhelmed by this huge amount of footage I got for a project, try out this method, maybe it can help you too. So I hope you found this video helpful, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to leave them down in the comments and I hope to see you guys in the next video.